Fool's Ebony, Part the Tooth. Dramatis Personae. Prologue, the adventurer, a dark elf rascal Coman, a priest of Akatosh Liban, another priest of Akatosh Epilogue, Steet, a priest of Julianos Rake, another priest of Juliano Shub, a mage Shub, a different mage of the same name, Nephron, a somewhat sleazy merchant, five armors, Orthocrun, husband of Millie, a lusty contessa of Millie, innkeeper and philosopher, Guernsey, bovine wench, a sort of wenches, and cads of the taverns. Part the tooth, bearing mostly on fool's ebony and temples. Same place, same inn, a bottle or two later, enter Prologue, the Adventurer, and Leban. Prologue. Little has occurred so far in our comedic drama. The Adventurer, our dark air flaskal, has bought drinks for two priests of Akatosh. All have drunk considerably. One of the priests has rushed off in pursuit of his lamp girl. And unless I've forgotten something or something happened when I wasn't paying attention, that's a complete synopsis of Part the Oneth. Ah, uh, here come two more priests. Humble prologue must depart. Enter Rake and Steet. Rake. Evening, Lewin. Evening, stranger. My fellow priest here is Steet. I am Rake. We are honored to serve Julianos. Adventurer. What is this, anyway? Priest night out? I thought that your temples, Actos Julianos, the rest. I thought them all cutthroat competitors. In theology and gold, if you will forgive my bluntness, yet you all seem the best of friends. Come to think of it, didn't I have words with Steet earlier? You said you were... You were the temple of Stendar? Rake. A common misconception, friend. Leaven. But one that we encourage. Rake. Really, we all work together closely. Move between the temples as needs dictate. Leaven. Exchange information. Rake. Share funds. Steet. Swap our sisters. Leaven kicks Sten. Enter Prologue. Prologue. Sorry to interrupt the merry slapstick, but I neglected to mention earlier that the Fool's Gold Saga, if that's the word, contains gratuitous references to priestly misdeeds and sexual excess. I hope that you and the audience of peevish, prudish, sullen, frumpy, or grumpy demeanors are not offended. Now then, on with the entertainment. Exit prologue. Leaven. And all that. Rick. But it helps in our holy work, if we are perceived as separate and uh, competitive. Leaven. Mind you that there are one or two religious organizations, well, sort of, that we do not have anything to do with. Rake. Nothing at all. Nothing at, at all. Animals. Just animals. Adventure. Such as? Even. Well, the Dark Brotherhood for one. Nasty bunch of thugs. And then, there's the After Dark Society. Aside to Rake. This fellow seems to be a decent sort of chap. Seems to know something about mages and fools' ebony. Rake. Aside to Levin. Really now. How interesting. To all. Hey, fellow, have another bottle. This will bless your throat. My, my, yes, indeed it will. Adventure. Thanks, Rake. Don't mind a bit. Leaven. But let me continue. I was explaining about this fool's ebony to you. Rake. Yes, fool's ebony. Leaven. Well, fool's ebony now. You know about ordinary ebony, how it's rare. Only some dwarven clans dig it and sell it. And not too many these days and times. Steet. How's that popular song go? Where have all the old dwarfs gone? Long time ago. Even throws Inkeep at Steet. Rick breaks chair on Inkeep and Steet. Inkeep loses consciousness. Leaven. There's a pile of real ebony in the Rothgarians somewhere north, I hear. Tell? You know how that dullish black ebony gets worked over by mages, by some skilled armors made into all kinds of potent weapons, amulets, belts, what have you. I'll fetch a huge price, when you can find any and how the best was made long ago by those old dwarves. Steet rises to his feet, leaving Kick Steet back down. The adventurer fixes his tunic. Leaving. Oh my, my apologies, friend, sir. I see you have a... What's that? An ebony torque? Oh my, and an ebony katana. Oh my, oh my, my. So, of course, you know all that, sir. Adventure. Oh, that's all right. You didn't know. Here, have another bottle. Leaving. Many thanks, sir. Well then, you know how every adventurer, even snotty kids, all the dungeon delvers, are always looking for ebony artifacts, what weapons, what not. But what you may not know is some of the more experienced delvers hunt for raw ebony loads, piles, dwarven leavings. That stuff, the raw ebony is far more valuable. Adventure, the raw, unshaped material that provides work and power for so few. Apparently just loaded with negative magicka. Rick. Right, right. Leaving. Yes, right so. Quite so. Well, fool's ebony now. Looks 
just about like the real raw stuff. Runs in veins in the deep rocks, feels the same, smells almost the same. But the big difference is not real ebony. No power at all. If you pick some up, it gets your hands a bit dirty. Softer too, by all accounts. But sort of shiny too. But who can tell all that? Deep in some old mine, maybe a ghoul breathing down your neck. So it's just grab and run. I guess down those nasty holes to the fools, the kids, the crazy delvers, always getting hauling up a bag, a sack of fool's ebony, and getting laughed at by the merchants, dealers, mages, us, hence the fool's part. Stuff just gets thrown into the bay. Adventure. Yeah, that's sort of what I uh, heard from some mages, but I heard something else too. Leaving. And just what was that, friend? If you want to tell us, of course, sir. Adventure. Oh, of course. I think that we can come to, uh, an arrangement. Leaven and Rake, together. Certainly. Adventure. So, yes. So these mages, Shub and Shub. They're always called Shub, aren't they? Anyway, these old guys are saying how this fool's ebony can burn. Not magically, but like an ordinary piece of wood. But the flame lasts far longer, gives off lots more heat, makes no smoke to speak of, no noise. Very interesting. Major was saying as how the alchemist wanted to heat the restorts and flasks, and how the mages' guild wants it to make and sell uh, fake amulets and the like. Rotten trick that. And especially the armors, they want it bad for their forges, I guess, and the alchemist for their alembics. Leaven. Precisely my information. Now, it gets cold up here in the winter, doesn't it? And everyone's cutting down all these trees, making siege engines, boats, and all that evil war machinery. All those rich royals and merchants got to heat their great big piles of homes. So their contestants can run around in next to nothing instead of furs. Steet. Just like my sister. Leaven bites Steet's arm. Steet shrieks and falls unconscious. Adventure. All those armors got to keep their heat earths and furnaces running. Leaven. All the mages got to keep their familiars warm. Rake. All those warriors got to keep the contestants running. Leaven. All those peasants got to keep their animals warm. Adventure. And a Shio Goroth with the wife and kids, right? Ha! Huh. I guess it's sort of hard. For you priests to give blessings and cures, when your fingers are all cold and stiff, it makes getting corks out a tad hard to say nothing of opening those little twists of parchment. Rake. You speak truly indeed. Leaven. A man of wisdom indeed, yes. So where do we find this fool's ebony in quantity? Leaven. You put your finger... You have six, I note. Oh, excuse me, sir. On the crux of the matter, I have heard rumors, just rumors, mind you, that there are huge, enormous veins of this stuff at one place on the surface far up in the Rothgarians. Bad, bad place to go. But if you can get there and back, cartloads of the stuff. Adventure. That's just what I overheard from those mages, far up there in the Rothgarians. Orcs, dragonlings, Daedra, Sheogorath, only knows what. Those mages seem to know the spot, though. Mages wanted someone to... Rake, you didn't talk to the mages. I mean, you haven't. Adventure, oh no, they didn't even know I was there. Not yet, anyway. Leaven, good, good. Can't trust those mages, you know. Old fossils would turn their own mothers into sludge toads, just for a bit of gold. Gold mad, power mad, mad mad, the whole rotten lot of them. But then they don't have mothers. Rake, excellent, seems to me, friend. Or can we call you partner, yes? Excellent, seems to me, partner. That my brother, priests, and you should do some digging and poking around. See if we can get to these veins, those deposits, eh? Adventure. Yes, indeed, partners. But it would cost a fair pile of gold to get up there. Weapon spells, women, clothing, carts, and horses, women, food, potions. Best go well prepared up there. Leaven. No problem, partner. Our temples have certain resources, such that if we were guaranteed sole access, sole knowledge of the location, then we could finance someone, someone with the requisite skills, someone such as yourself. Just by happenstance, I am keeper of the books. You see the opportunity? Adventure. Oh yes, oh yes. Well, let's split the last bottle and shake on an agreement. Leaven. Indeed, let us. We first need information. Who knows? about the site up there. Where is it? How to reach it? Why don't we meet back here in, say, a week to the hour, and see what we can learn meanwhile? Rake. We need to find a merchant, too, someone who can handle it for us. Warehouses. Distribution. Leaven. And keep a mouth shut. Adventure. I'll make some inquiries about merchants. Get a contact or two. Trouble is, 
Well, as you know about how these things go, a few golds here, a few there, before you know it, you've bribed half the town, or so it seems. Now as luck would have it, I don't have much. Got swindled by a wretched mage, some town south of here, and lost most of my belongings in a shipwreck. Leaving. Ah, yes, you need some seed money, as it were. Rake to Levin. Let me lift old Steed's purse. He made a lot renting out his sister last week. Levin. Thank you, Rake. Here, about a hundred gold. Uh, enough? Oh, yes, more than enough for a start. Gentlemen, good, good, good. So we have a deal. Yes, it's agreed. One week. Exit Levin. Rake dragging Steed. Exit the adventurer. Enter Epilogue. Epilogue. Ah, these things are happening now. I doubt it not. Patrons, I request that you recall, this is a work of fiction created by one of the finest writers of the asylum, Friendships, Archprince of all Somerset. There is no such thing as fool's ebony. Furthermore, ebony is not mined, as the priests have described in the process. Grasp that, please. If you can still enjoy the play as a rude work of fiction, stay with us for part the threeth. If you can't, farewell, and don't forget to tip the wenches. And so endeth part the tooth.